This tutorial is basically a crash course on the Q-Label widget in PyQt6. We're going to cover as many methods, as many functions, as many different features we can for the Q-Label widget. We'll explore how to change its font size, how to change the font itself, how to add in CSS styles, and basically everything you need to know about the Q-Label widget. All right. So the Q-Label widget, as you guys might already know, it's used to display simple lines of text on your GUI window. All right. That's one of the most basic applications, one of the most basic widgets you know you can have in your GUI window. And you'll be using this a lot, so make sure you do know how to use it properly. All right. Now let's create a simple widget called label from the QLabel class. Okay. And this is imported from the Qt widgets module. All right. The first parameter is going to be the string that you want to have displayed on your window. So I'm going to go with hello world. Okay. The second parameter is going to be the parent, which is going to be self in this case. Okay. Then I'm going to move it somewhere in the middle of our screen. Okay. And this should be good. All right. Not too bad. Let's just leave it that there for now. All right. Now let's take a look at what we can do with this. Okay. This is a very simple widget. All right. That's all there was to it. But how can we interact with it? How can we change it? How can we customize it? Let's take a look at that. I'm going to import the Q push button because I want to create a button that I'm going to use for demonstration purposes. Okay. You can check out my video on the Q push button linked in the description below. Okay. It's pretty cool as well. So I'll just create a simple button, call it click me and make the parent self move it somewhere. Uh, let's just move it somewhere near the top. Okay. And what I'm going to do is now create a function. Okay. I want it to call this function on the label. Okay. Basically I'll call this function func. Okay. And in here, I'm going to do something with the label. Okay. Just watch. This may seem a little confusing right now, but what I'm doing here with the button is connecting the button to a function. Okay. So now whenever I click the button, this function is going to be called. All right. And I want to basically write some code in here that's going to modify our label widget. Okay. So whenever I click the button, some code is going to run that's going to change our widget in some way. This is what I'm using for demonstration purposes. Okay. So I can't access the label like this. Okay. Because it's a local variable in here. I need, I need to make it self dot label. Okay. Now I can access it over here. So I'll do self dot label. And what functions can I use on the label? Well, the label has a bunch of functions it already has. So that's actually what I'm going to be showing you. Okay. The first thing I want to show you is how to access the current text on the label. Okay. Cause you may want to do this. The label may have some important information that you want. Okay. So you want to find out what, what is the current displayed text on the label? So you can use the text function for this. Okay. So what this, what I've done here is that whenever I click this button, click me, it should print out the current text on the label. Okay. So if I do that, then yes, hello world is being printed down there. So we know our code is working. Great. Okay. What else can we do? Okay. Well, what we can also use some other cool functions is set. Um, where is it? Set selected set selected text. That's what it's called. I think. Hmm. All right. Hold on. Uh, I may be confusing it with something else. Yes. Set text. Okay. So the set text function can be used to modify the currently displayed text on the label. So if I pass in goodbye world here, if I run this code now, and if I click this button, the text is going to change. Okay. But what just happened here? Why did the label suddenly, why is only some of it displaying? Why is this, you know, being cropped? Well, let me explain this. Well, this is because whenever you create a label, it has a size, a default size. Okay. That default size is basically, um, for example, you made a, a label with 20 characters. Okay. And now it's a, it's a default size is 20 characters that label is now a fixed size of 20 pixels. So if you try putting in some text of say 40 pixels, only 20 of those pixels will be displayed. 
okay? That's basically how it works. It won't dynamically resize, okay? So for this, there's actually a pretty easy fix. You just need to do self.label.adjust size, okay? And run this code. And if I click the button again, it's gonna work. Because what happened is that we set the text and then we adjusted the size, adjusted the size so that it expanded, okay? To fit the text it's currently holding. So yeah, that's, um, that's something important to keep in mind and it's an issue that a lot of people run into. And I'm not sure why I'm printing this out over here. I'm not supposed to, because it's just re returning none, obviously. Let me take a quick scroll through some of the you know functions over here and see if there's anything that I should mention. Um, content margins, that's just for padding. Set cursor, you can change the cursor when your mouse is hovering over it. Set disabled, you can ha disable the widget. Um, I'm not sure what happens actually if you do this. Okay, uh, apparently when you disable a label, it turns gray. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, what else is there? There's, uh, come on, set, set, uh, well, so yeah, you can change the size, okay, you can manually change the size here, change, uh, you know, the height, the size, the width, okay, the size function takes two parameters uh, for both the width and the height, or you can just use the height and the width functions as well, okay, your choice. And yeah, there are a bunch of cool functions like this. Set font, of course, of course. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that right now. Set font. This is an important topic of today's video. How to use fonts, okay? Let's just remove this over here. We don't need that anymore, okay? Now, what I want to do here is change the font, okay? I wanna change the current font, the default font. Now, there are two types of fonts. We can either use the default fonts that are available to us, in PYQD6 by default, or we can you know, download some custom fonts and then use them. I'll show you both right now. The first thing you can do is just change it to something like Verdana, which is like uh, available almost everywhere, but you can't just use it like that. You need to create a QFont object, okay? And unfortunately, you need to actually make an additional import for this, for the QFont. Uh, you need to do from PYQD6.QTGOI import Q font, okay? I'm also gonna import Q font database because I'll need that later for the custom font, okay? And yeah, so over here, you can pass in the first parameter to Q font is the name of the font. The second parameter, which is optional by the way, uh, you don't need to do this, but you can pass in the size, so like 15, okay? And this is also where I'm just gonna uh, do label dot adjust size because there's going to be a, a lot of resizing. So yeah. Okay, I'm going to click on this now and it just changed the font type and it changed the font size. All right. You can also use Times New Roman over here. And if I run this code now, it changes the font to Times New Roman. Okay, that looks pretty nice. So yeah, you can also, by the way, make it italic. So italic is equal to true. All right, now it's, you know, in italics. So pretty cool, right? So what else can we do? Custom fonts, right? How do we add in custom fonts? Let me show you how. I actually have some custom fonts in here, Frostbite and Machine Gunk, okay? Let's take a look at those. I'll use Machine Gunk, all right, in today's video. So what I want to do first is add it, okay? I've, I have downloaded the TTF file, and I'll, by the way, I'll include these links to these downloads uh, in the description, okay, for your use. But um, right now, the important thing to keep in mind is that we have downloaded this font, we have the font file, but that's not enough. We need to add it into our GUI application somehow, okay? And by add, I don't mean select it over here, okay? You can't type frostbite over here, or machine gunk actually, and expect it to work, okay? It won't work, all right? Because we need to first load it into our Q font database, which is by the way, the import that I made earlier. So what, what I'm gonna do here is Q font database dot set, uh, hold on, what was it? Add, yeah, add application font. This is used to add in fonts. 
So I'm going to add, I'll just use the full path here. Okay, VS Code Programs, that's where I'm working right now. And Tutorials, the Tutorials folder where I am, and PYQD6, then the name of my TDF file, which is machinegunk.tdf. All right, so what's the next step? I've loaded it in currently, and you can verify this by uh, checking the ID. If the ID is less than zero, then that means there was an error, okay? Now, what this, this might still cause some problems. Hold on, hold on. All right, this still might cause some problems because uh, we need to use the name of the font here, right? We need to use the name of the font machine gunk, but machine gunk is just what, what I named the font style, sorry, the font file. You don't, you don't know what the actual name for the file is. Okay, it may be something else. It may have some different spacing, different capitali capitalization or something. You, you don't know that. So you need to find out what the name of this font is. And the name of the font can actually be found within the file. Uh, let me just show you an easy way of doing so. Families is equal to uh, QFont database and add, uh, no, not, not add, application font families and then just pass an ID, okay? And the first, the first uh, element in this list, because it'll return a list of different font families, the first element in this list is gonna be the name of our file, okay, the name of our font. So I'm gonna print this out, sorry, I'm gonna run this code, all right? Now, our font style is not gonna change, all right? It just changed the size, okay? It hasn't, this is not the machine gun font, okay? It just changed the size a bit, all right? Because PYQD6 has a fallback system. If it doesn't find the font you mentioned, it'll just revert to the default font. So that's why it's not giving an error, okay? But uh, what is the problem here? You see down here, this is where we printed out the families, the first element, and that's machine gunk with a space, okay? That's the actual name. So if I uh, if I make that space here, and if I run this code, and if I click the button, this is now converting it to the actual machine gunk file, okay? To the actual machine gunk font, I mean. So yeah, I hope you understood what I was trying to get at here, because uh, you know the process of importing fonts is not that simple. You need to you know face these problems. Uh, so you might face an error over here, the file might not be supported, etc, etc. So th these are just things to keep in mind. All right. Uh, what else is there? We just covered how to use custom fonts. And besides this, we can talk about CSS styles, CSS styles that we can use on the QLabel widget. Let me just remove this stuff. Okay. And let's just remove this as well. We don't need that anymore. All right. What I'm going to do here is use the cell, sorry, style sheet, set, set style sheet function, and this accepts CSS, okay? And CSS in PYQD6, or QSS as it's called, is a pretty vast topic. I've made a whole video on this separately. If you wanna learn more about this, then go check that out, okay? It has a lot more information, uh, but I'll just give you a bit of a overview right now, okay? So you can basically add in CSS styles in here, Okay, you could do like a background color and make that, uh, what's a good background color? Um, blue, you could make it blue. And what this is gonna do is make the background of it blue. And it looks way too tiny right now. So let's increase the font size a bit. And yes, you can change the font size using CSS as well, okay? So there we go, there's our font size. And by the way, you can even change the font itself, you know, the font type, the font family using CSS. That's pretty cool, right? There are a bunch of CSS properties like this that you can change. One cool property is sh text shadow. Okay, so two pixels, two pixels for horizontal shadow and vertical shadow. And then you can add in some blur, okay? Uh, four pixels, this is optional, so you don't need to include this. Then you include the color that you want the shadow to be. Okay, I'll make it black. Okay, and I'm gonna make the color of the font white. Okay, so let's just try this. 
this is uh, the hexa code for black. So if I'm correct with this code, it should make the color white and give it a shadow of black. Uh, hold on, I don't think that really worked. Maybe text shadow is not supported with, by, with PYQT6. And this is something you might face later on as well because not all fonts are actually supported. All right, sorry, not all CSS properties are supported, by the way. And well, the reason for that is because uh, PYQ6 actually supports an old version of CSS. It doesn't really support the newer ones. So text shadow maybe is a feature from a newer CSS version. That's why it's not working, maybe. Oh wait, I, I didn't notice down here. It's actually saying that, that it's unknown property. Okay, that makes sense. I guess it's not supported. There's actually a list of supported styles. You can go Google that and it'll tell you everything you need to know about which styles are supported and which ones are not. All right, but I think we'll end the video here. We've covered a lot of content uh, and I think you guys know a lot about the widget now, about the Q-Label widget and how to use it, how to customize it and so on. If you like this content and want to see more like it in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought and hopefully I'll see you guys in a later video.